Hey guys, this is Violet, and right now I'm going to show you how to get into Cyrodiil for the first time and do the starter quests. This helps us learn about Cyrodiil, and you get two skill points when you do it. Cyrodiil is um, where you'll find the Alliance War. It's ESO's big, massive PvP area. But what you may not know is that Cyrodiil also has a lot of PvE content. In fact, there are several big questing hubs spread across the map, and they give really serious XP. There are also a load of delves, uh, a lot of them have achievement bosses, tons of lore books, uh, dolmens, there's trophy fish to catch, and of course there's sky shards to be gathered. There are over 45 sky shards in fact, which means that you'll get 15 skill points if you get all the sky shards in Cyrodiil. So I'm leveling an alt right now, and she just reached level 10, and I'm ready to take her into Cyrodiil. I know that she can go into Cyrodiil because I received a mail from the Alliance base camp. What's funny about this is that it doesn't actually tell you how to get into Cyrodiil. It just welcomes you and says, join us. So how you get into Cyrodiil is you press L, and that will open up the Alliance War menu. Now you'll see a bunch of campaigns here. Uh, this campaign list is current as of October 1st. There are 30 day campaigns that Zoss has given us um, after the Imperial City patch. So currently there's four of these. There's also a non-vet campaign and then there's seven day campaigns as well. Now normally I would pick the campaign that is the home campaign of my guild um, today that campaign is very full and it would take a while to get in so I'm going to go ahead and set a different home campaign for this character because I'm not going to be playing her very much um, and I definitely will change her back to my guild's home campaign when I'm ready to do that. So you get the choice of setting both your home campaign and your guest campaign. So for my home campaign I'm going to pick True Flame today. You just right click and set as home. You get a prompt asking if this is what you want to do. Also note that it says you can change um, for a period of time and it's free, but then future changes will cost you alliance points. I'm gonna accept that. And now you see that there's a little icon saying this is your home campaign. To enter into Cyrodiil, you just right click again and click enter campaign. Now you'll see these little icons here. Um, those represent how many players are actually in the campaign at the time. You can see these locks. Uh, that's why I didn't pick Azuros today. But those locks basically mean that you'll have to queue. Sometimes the queue is really short and you're in position two. Uh, it takes maybe a few minutes to get in. Other times the queues can be really long and it can take a very long time to get in. So that's what those indicators mean. I'm going to go ahead and click enter campaign. You'll get a notification when you're available to travel to that campaign. You just click on notifications and choose accept. Note that it will expire in 60 seconds, so you have to be paying attention, otherwise your queue position will start over um, if you don't accept the uh, enter into campaign notification. Now that I'm in Cyrodiil, um, you might have noticed that my skills are steadily growing here. Not my skills, my health, my stamina, and my magicka. And that's because I'm now battle leveled. This means that I stand a better chance against enemies of higher level. Every time you come into Cyrodiil, you're battle leveled.
I don't know if you also noticed, but there was an assault line prompt uh, that said that I just opened up a new skill line. That happens when you come into Cyrodiil for the first time as well. It's a good time to mention though that Cyrodiil has its own ranking and point system. You get alliance ranks and alliance points by completing PvP missions, capturing keeps and resources, and killing enemy players. Killing enemy players definitely gives the most AP. So if you look at the skill line now, you'll see there's a new one called Alliance War. You click into it, and there's two new skills here. Assault and Support. Both of these skill points, or I'm sorry, both of these skill lines um, can be used inside and outside the Cyrodiil. As you go up in your Alliance rank, you'll gain achievements, titles, and dies um, for ranking up. Here's where you can see what your rank points are. As we go through the quests here, um, we'll be able to gain rank points and we'll rank up a few times, which is why you end up getting the skill points. Alliance points are really interesting because they are actually also used as a currency. If you go in here, you'll see you get alliance points as a currency. You can use this currency to buy siege weapons and special gear that you can only find in Cyrodiil. So now I'm going to go ahead and start to talk to this NPC here right at the gate. Um, every faction has a different NPC, but you'll always find it uh, the person that you need to talk to right here at the beginning of the gate. Let me guess, another new recruit, and you're here to fight for the pact. Ha, <laughs> not likely. You need training. Let's start with an easy task. Mirrored skin waits at the southern Morrowind gate with munitions for the siege range. Use the transitor's shrine to get there and back. Vodha Herendas can tell you more about it. <clears throat> it's your skin. If you think you're ready, speak with Grand Warlord Zimran. Only he can excuse you from training. Okay, so I just got the option to complete the missions or to skip the missions. Um, if I skip, I will only get a single rank up, which means I only get one skill point as I don't gain all the AP I would get from doing all the missions. So I'm going to go ahead and do all the missions now. Plus, it's a really nice way to understand what you're doing here, especially for people. Come to use this transitor shrine? A wise choice. Do you have questions? The transitor shrine network is the fastest way to move among our keeps and gates, provided the links aren't broken. A keep's transitor's link is broken if all of its resources are owned by the enemy, or if the keep is under attack and a section of wall or gate is heavily damaged. So looking at the Cyrodiil map, you can see the uh, transitus shrines that he was just talking about. If the keeps are connected, you can travel between any of them within the line. It's also important to note that I am standing at the northern Morrowind Gate, and here's the southern Morrowind Gate. Uh, these two areas are safe zones. They're basically home base. You can always travel back to either of these, especially if you're dead on the field. So here I am at the southern gate. Anxiety parches my skin. Too many demands, 
too few supplies. Are you here to soothe or irritate? Ah, blessed moisture. Accept this package of munitions. Relieve me of its burden. Take it to Adal Moor on the siege range, beyond the northern Morrowind Gate. He is large and loud, as are all Nords. And back to the northern gate we go. Before we go turn in this quest, I do want to point out that both the southern and northern gates have way shrines. These way shrines are the only way out of Cyrodiil. If I were to open up my map right now and zoom out and zoom out again, you can see that you can't port to a way shrine outside of Cyrodiil. You have to actually come walk up to this way shrine to get out. Careful, this is a live firing range. Are you supposed to be here? Took your time, didn't you? Ovia mentioned she sent a recruit to fetch these. Since you're here, we could show you the siege weapons. Hey, look, my first alliance point. Nothing better than causing massive damage on the battlefield, is there? If you want to know more about the rams and oil, talk to Lurtis. For trebuchets, catapults, and ballistae, Speak with looks forward. And you see I got my first skill point. And again, that is because I just upgraded to Alliance War Volunteer. You'd better. That's what they're here for. Spend a few minutes using each weapon. Hit the practice dummies with them. Talk to looks forward and Lurtis if you want more information. See me when you're done. And here you can see that I've just ranked up to Pact Volunteer Grade 1. And if I wanted to, I could set a new title as Volunteer. weapons will make a difference in many battles. Trebuchets, catapults, and ballistae are dragons on the battlefield, causing massive damage to walls and enemies. I sense the target dummies mocking you. Choose a weapon and punish them. Each type of siege weapon, trebuchet, ballista, and catapult has unique abilities and uses. Trebuchets fling their missiles against keep walls, dealing great damage. There are three types. Fire pots launch burning oil. Stones smash both walls and soldiers. And ice balls cause damage and ensnare enemies in ice. Ballisti are dear to my heart. They fire fast and true, destroying enemy siege engines, including rams. Standard ballista bolts smash their targets. Fire bolts cause extensive burn damage, and lightning bolts shock and ensnare their victims. Catapults are wonderful weapons against enemy troops. Meat bag catapults spread disease. Oil imparts fire damage, and scatter shot causes impact damage. I envy the death you will inflict among our foes with these weapons. Indeed not. Fire them to see. The trebuchet and ballista fire the farthest. 
While the catapult has a shorter range, Chagrin will visit those who forget this on the battlefield. Okay, let's go try some. zoom out a bit to get a better view of what it's targeting. already? I hope so, for everyone's sake. If you want a siege weapon of your own, you can buy them from siege merchants at our gates and keeps. You need to know how to repair walls, doors, and siege engines. Our enemies will batter at our keeps while we bash at theirs. Siege weapons can be damaged too. All this can be repaired. Killing the attackers is a good start. Then repair kits can fix some of the damage. Here's a practice repair kit for a siege weapon. Use it on a trebuchet, catapult, or ballista. When you're done, Galsi wants to talk to you. So like he said, you can buy siege weapons at siege merchants. Um, but there's also a more powerful siege weapon that you can get from dolmen chests called cold, cold stone siege weapons. And you can get both uh, trebuchets and ballistas. This part can be a little confusing because as you step up to one of the siege weapons, uh, you get the prompt to use it. But when you're repairing something, you actually need to go into your inventory and get the repair kit. from the consumable items and quick slot it. Then you can go up to any siege weapon and this also applies to doors and walls in keeps. And then you just push Q, select your repair kit and click Q to repair it. You are always welcome here, warrior. Your time here is done. Others need to speak to you. Speak with the protector Galiel at the Elder Scroll Temple of Chim. He will show you what we fight for. And here we are at the Scroll Temple. Take them. The Elder Scroll of Chim has been stolen. I can tell you of the Elder Scrolls, but you will not feel their holy presence until our scroll returns. Perhaps you can help once you complete your training. 
So as you can see, our Elder Scroll has been stolen, so you won't be able to actually see it in this tutorial. Um, but you'll still get the information. As well you should. All packed soldiers should covet the Elder Scrolls. It is our destiny to control them all. The simplest understanding of the Elder Scrolls is that they are prophecies. But they are so much more than that. The scrolls contain records of all past and future events, but they cannot be read without blindness, madness, or worse. The Aedra created them, some say, but why or when is unknown. The temples are holy places, created as housing for the scrolls, to honor and protect them. We built them upon the soil of Cyrodiil, close enough to the battlefields to bestow their blessings upon our troops. The Grand Warlord orders these attacks. Access to each scroll is blocked by a gate. To unlock it, both keeps protecting it must be taken away from the alliance that holds the scroll. Once the keeps are captured, the way to the temple is open. The Elder Scroll must be taken from its temple and brought to one of our six original keeps. Once there, it must be placed upon a scroll pedestal. Needless to say, capturing an Elder Scroll requires the cooperation of many soldiers. It is our destiny to control all the scrolls. Every Elder Scroll we hold grants power to all the soldiers of the Pact. This is another reason our enemies cannot be allowed to keep any of them. Books in this temple contain information about the Elder Scrolls, if you wish to know more. Grand Warlord Zimran needs to speak with you when you're done here. Hold a moment, soldier. The Pact needs you. You near the end of your training, soldier. Now to tell you of capturing the enemy's keeps and resources. All resistance must be crushed. When our banner flies boldly atop the flagpole, all know the pact has conquered again. For keeps, we must breach walls or sunder gates to reach the heart of the enemy stronghold. None of this will be easy. The pact is destined to rule Cyrodiil. Each keep and resource we conquer is a step toward this goal. Your participation in these actions enables you to acquire equipment and weapons from Pact Siege merchants. I decide the direction of the Pact in Cyrodiil. Dreet carries my orders to the Generals Dalyers and Jegord. They post these to the mission boards for all to see. General Dalyers will tell you more. Okay, so now we get to learn about how to get Alliance War missions. I extend the Claw of Welcome, warrior. The Grand Warlord has much on his mind. Be grateful for a few minutes of his time. To me come Grand Warlord Zimmerin's orders. These I post to the boards that flank me. Which should we discuss? Even the newly hatched can understand bounty missions. The task is to kill enemy soldiers. All that lives must die. These missions seek to hasten that day for our enemies. Information is critical to our efforts. A scouting mission sends you to a target deep in enemy territory. The Swamp Eel sees, but is not seen. Be the Swamp Eel, then return here. General Jagord supervises the other missions. Speak with him to learn about them. He glares at us from across the way. Do not be shy. Jagord hisses loudly, but seldom bites. So scouting missions are a great way to get AP uh, as a beginner because you can do them alone. And if you can avoid enemy players uh, along the way, you don't have to fight in order to get your scouting done. Yes, 
What is it? Got tired of you pestering her, eh? Very well. I administer the battle and war front missions. Go ahead. Ask me. Battle missions send small groups of soldiers to capture enemy resources. Each keep is supported by a farm, lumber mill, and mine. Denying the enemy these resources is the first step to claiming that keep for the pact. A warfront mission targets one of the enemy's keeps. Controlling keeps is the key to conquering Cyrodiil. This is a major effort, though. Go in without a large force, and you're all going to die. There's always more to learn, but the battlefields will be your teacher from this point on. The mission boards await. Start with a scouting mission. You're less likely to die on one of those. Welcome to the war. And that's it. Those are the three main quest lines that you can do in Cyrodiil to get your two skill points and rank up. Here's the scouting board. You just examine it, accept the mission, and you've picked it up and it's in your quest log. This is the bounty board. This is the battle mission board, which is for keeps, I'm sorry, for resources. And this is the warfront mission board, which is for keeps. So a couple of notes on those uh, missions as well. You can only have one resource quest at a time. So you can only have one farm or mine or lumber mill. Um, all of these quests are shareable with your group mates, but if you've already done a bounty such as kill enemy players uh, and someone tries to share it with you, you won't be able to pick it up for another 24 hours. So you can see I've earned enough AP to be volunteer pack volunteer grade two, two skill points. So now I want to show you a couple other things on the map just to illustrate how big Cyrodiil is and all of the PvP and PvE options that you have. Since this character is tiny and hasn't done anything here, I'm going to switch to another character who has a pretty detailed map. As you can see, I've now switched to another character who has more on her Cyrodiil map so that I can show you a few things. Uh, the first thing you'll notice on my Cyrodiil map is all of the fishing pins um, because I love fishing and I have all the trophy fish from Cyrodiil. You'll notice that uh, there's a lot of fishing spots so that also helps illustrate how large this area is. So I have a lot of add-ons that show different things. I'm just going to start popping them up there. As you can see, there are a ton of materials to gather in Cyrodiil. So even if you just went in to explore, you're going to get a lot of mats. Objectives are all of the different things that you can discover, including all of the delves and different quest areas. So for example, this is Shaden Hall. Shaden Hall is a quest area where you will get, I believe it's 12 different quests to complete. And as I said before, there are a ton of experience points to gain by doing these quest hubs. There's also Mundus Stones to find, along with other points of interest. There are delves and different battle areas all across the map. There are also dolmens that you can complete. If you're collecting lore books, you'll also see that there are many 
together throughout Cyrodiil. And of course, Sky Shards. I'll turn off objectives so you can see them a little bit better. They're scattered all over the place and some are going to be very difficult to get because they're behind the enemy gates. This is also a good time to point out that this particular keep is contested. It's under attack and you can see that by this little icon that sits behind it. You'll also see that behind resources when they're under attack. This middle section here is Imperial City. If you have the DLC, you can also travel there, and here are the two dungeon entrances, or the new two, two new dungeons. I'll cover how to get into Imperial City and how to start those uh, first quests in another video. So that's it. Thanks for watching, and I hope this is helpful for your journey into Cyrodiil.